Andy, we thank you for his love and his heart for you and your house. And Lord, as he shares tonight, I just pray that you'd speak to each and every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jinx. <laughs> um, we head into the series, Anything But Distancing. Um, I feel a bit of pressure, as, um, as Pastor mentioned, of carrying on from last week. I thought Chris just knocked it out of the park. Um, it was so true and real and something really um, that we could all relate to. Fear hits us all in different ways. And tonight I hope, I'm hoping to, to share a few stories, share some, um, some Bible stuff, but then hopefully share some real practical tips as well that, that, that have helped me. Over, um, I mean, this here, Anything But Distance, is a play on, obviously, what happened with um, what happened here in, in our country, but what's happening all over the world. And um, obviously, physically, we had to be distanced in different ways. But I, I think over that time, um, <clears throat> what played on, on my heart was there were other things that were distanced as well. Um, and as we get together, we get back together um, physically, it's quite easy just to, to come in and to do that um, naturally. And, like, we can break that distancing easily. But there's some other things that are more important to us. Like, to me, the most important thing has always got to be inside, like the, the real us, the, our, our souls, our white or Like, that's... That's the thing that um, that matters most, and I think that's a harder fix. To just to like, I, I can I can get closer to the meter here by just by doing this, but we can't connect um, until we've actually sat down and spent some time. And so that's what this whole um, series is about, and the things that kind of get in the way of that connection, anything things that get away in the way of of us getting that closeness. Um, and so <clears throat> as I was um, as I was thinking about this the series. Um, and I've, I've been reading a book lately that kind of spoke to me. I was like, this just lines up. And it's this book here by Judah Smith. It's called um, How's Your Soul? And it's it's a cool book. Um, I've, I've bef- Previously, I've been reading some kind of heavier books, like some pretty f- quite intense ones that took me a while to read. But this one here was, um, in some ways, it was an e- it's probably like what Marion talked about this morning. It's a bit milky and meaty, not very vegan friendly. Um, you can, um, like you can eat, take it in easily, but then it has like it speaks to you on a deep level. And uh, it starts off and talks about how um, at the very start, like you know, how you've got friends that come up to you and be like, "Okay, how are you?" And lots of the people you're just like, "Yeah, it's cool." But then you have got some friends who can look you in the eye and go, "How are you?" And you go, "Cool, cool, 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 cool." Um, and he was talking about the whole idea of how's your soul. And to me, soul health is a massive part of how we are in regards to our intimacy with God and and where we are with distancing. I think if we are not, if our soul's not right, there causes unrest. There's unrest in us, and we don't feel like there's a comfort. And 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 inside of me, like I think that's really important that we always find that place of of rest and of comfort. Not necessarily because everything around us is easy, but because inside of us we've got that connection. Um. I love to come home. I love uh, when we've, we were lucky enough to be a head up north to Kaitaia, and up north is beautiful. Like New Zealand is just a stunning place. Um, but there's a few little like, points that as I come home, I'm like, ah, like the first one is fata fata. As soon as I get to fata fata, I'm like, okay, I, I know this right. I can brace, almost do it with my eyes closed. Um, and then there's another other point at the top of the divvy, and you'll know the one. You know when you get to the very top of the divvy, just um, where the people can pull over on, the top, on e- either side, but you first see Karioi, and through the valley there, um, that there's an, like another point for me that I'm like, ah. Uh, and then another point is just out here, actually. Um, and then the last one is when I first see the water. Uh, there are a few places that you, go, that you start to go, uh, and you unwind on the way back home. Um, ev- and for me, uh, even teaching, like being at working in Hamilton, every day when I come home, it's just so nice to be like, I leave a little bit, leave a little bit there. I leave a little bit of my day there. I leave a little bit of my day there. And by the time I get home, like I walk in my door and I just, I feel like home is where it's comfy. Home is where everything is well. Like you can just wear trackies and not be judged too much. Um, I would be judged, if I live by myself, I wouldn't be judged at all. But then let's be honest, I'd be living by myself if I wore trackies the whole time. Um... But when we come home, it's that, that place of total relaxation. And, and I feel um, when we're talking about our souls, we want to find that place that is our home. 
Where is our home? Where is that, that place that we feel a, t- a total peace? And if I go through um, the scriptures, that first place that, w- that it all started, we, um, it started all off in Genesis. So if we, uh, we're going to have it up on the Air Bible up here as well so you can see it on the screen. But we're going to be reading out of Genesis 2 um, today. So Eden is like the blueprint to our soul health. That's where it all started. So if your computer goes all AWOL, you have to kind of do the whole, have you restarted it? Try again. And this is what it's like for our soul as well. So we're going to read um, from Genesis 2. And hopefully it's not too small on your screen. But I'll read it out loud. So here we go. In verse 5 it says, Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. That's cool, eh? First point of life. God breathed into the nostrils of this person, of mankind, and it became living. Took your first breath is the breath of God. Pretty rare. We'll move on verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we're going to skip to verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Then the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Then the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. And it carries on in that verse. We're just going to focus on those those, um, verses for today. So I want to get really practical um, and talk about some practical ways that we can uh, make sure that our souls are healthy. And I've got four kind of points, because I think four is easy, it's well balanced, it's like a square. Um, I quite like that. Um, maybe it's the OCD in me. Actually, speaking of OCD, I've just started to, n- sorry, I've got tangents. I've just started to notice that on the way here, the, 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 um, the maze has just popped up today. And the next like month or two, you'll be able to drive into Hamilton and see all the maze, the perfect rows of them. Does anyone else get off on that? Like, uh, Yeah, there's a few of us, okay. And you go past and you're like, oh, that just feels so good. <laughs> anyway, four points OCD. Okay, first point, uh, let's go to Genesis 2, 8, and 9, uh, which reads, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The first thing God puts out in the Bible after bringing mankind into life, as he says, there are trees, they are stunning, and there is food, and it is awesome. Enjoy life. Like that's the first kind of thing that we see in the Bible that God's speaking into humanity. Um, I think if a lot of people asked, uh, if you ask a lot of people, even ourselves included, people can be asking, like, what's, what is a relationship with God? And a lot of us can say, like, oh, doing the right thing, being good. Um, rules, trying to live up to a standard. But would many people say, actually, a relationship with God is just enjoying, enjoying God? Like my first, my first point is, if we are to find anything in, in God, it's our first point is to rest. There are a couple of scriptures I want to point, pull out. Um, it is in Matthew, oh, sorry, Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds a house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Now, the reason I pull that verse out is when we find rest in God, we realize that actually it's not our doing. It's not up to us to change the world. It's up to us to do whatever we've been called to do. But God is there, and He's going to come through for us. Unless God is in it, we're doing these things in vain. If we carry on, and there's another uh, another verse that many of you may have heard of in Matthew um, 11, verse 28 and 29. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
the first thing that God did with mankind was to say, look at what we've got. I am this almighty God, and I've created things that are good for you. For our soul health, we need to acknowledge that we have a creator who is for us and wants us to be in rest with him in his, in his creation. We can't do it all. And that's hard for a lot of us. One thing I do want to point out, though, is um, resting in God isn't doing nothing. Um, I, I do want to just put out there that um, it says, unless the work is... Uh, unless the Lord builds a house, the workers labor in vain. But the workers still need to labor, labor if God wants to build the house. Like we still need to do stuff. Resting in God isn't doing nothing. It's knowing that what we're called to do is actually bigger than what we're capable of. Because we've been given a mission that's like way bigger than anything that we could do by ourselves. Delhi's the man, but he can't save Raglan. But we can. Actually, we can't still. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got on a tangent there. No, we can't. But with God, and a mighty God who creates his things that want us, he wants us to enjoy stuff, th- when he's with us, we've got that power. Which leads me to my next part, which is in Genesis verses, uh, Genesis 2, verses, verse 15. It says, The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The next thing that he did to man was, first thing was to rest. The next thing he had said, look, look what you've got. Take what we've got and work it. Like, I haven't just put you here to do nothing. Enjoy it, but then you've actually got a responsibility as well. Yeah? So for soul health, I actually think it's really important to enjoy God being in God's um, presence, but I actually think it's really important for us to be productive and do things and to be, be really uh, onto with our time. I know for me, over, over lockdown, there were times when I may not have been as productive, and I felt like that, that distancing um, of, of my own soul and it was when I went, actually, Andy, come on, like wake up at a reasonable hour. Um, actually do some mahi, like do, do some work, do, um, do something physical. And we're created in an image of a creator God. And if we're not walking in that idea of a creator, that, that involves work. Like God just, um, like he actually, he, he worked as he spoke these things into being. It wasn't just like he didn't do anything. He actually had to speak that into being. We actually have to do something for something to happen. And if we're made in the crea- image of a creator God, that's what we should be doing as well. I was um, walking recently um, down by the wharf. We live just, we're lucky enough to live close to the wharf just to walk down there. And um, I was just kind of mulling over. I, kn- I knew what I was talking about. Um, and I saw this old f- abandoned fishing boat. And those boats, I don't know, I'm, I'm not incredibly artistic, but they're just, they look really cool. They're, like, they're all rusty and a bit rustic. And you just look past me like, wow, that's pretty cool. If I was like hardcore Insta grammar, I would be, you know, people get paid a million bucks for an Instagram post. Anyway, um, I don't get paid that. Um, I don't post. Maybe I do get paid that. I've never known. And I was looking at these things. I was like, man, this is, this is really cool. But as I was walking past, something like a thought dropped into my head, which was, I was looking at these nets and they, Nets are just ropes, essentially, aren't they? They're like there's just this bunch of things that are together, and it, at that time they were just on the, they were on on the on the ship on the trawler. They were just bundled up, kind of like kind of like that. Now I wish I took that shot. I didn't put out a camera that good, but I had to find a shot that looked like. It. So I've got these nets and chains, and when they're on the boat, they are but useless, just like that. It's not until they're doing what they're designed to do that those things have value and have purpose. For us, we are designed to do things. Now, that rope may not have thought, hey, I want to grow up and be a net. It might have, had, had, it might have dreams of being a tug-of-war rope or something amazing. But when it's put together with others and, is, and can, um, can work together, it can do something that's actually pretty awesome. It can sustain life for other people and kill fish, but sustain life and for people. I digress. Because um, we don't find purpose in what we do. We always bring purpose in what we do. That's um, one of my favorite sayings, and I say it often. It's not just our work 
that we've got responsibility over too. It's all things we've got control over. It's, it's our body, it's our mind, it's our, it's our time. We've got control over those things. And when we steward those things well, I think that's really healthy in our souls. I was having a, um, a message, a, a messenger chat with, um, with Tiaro actually, um, over in, in England. He sends his love. Um, but I was just chatting about the things, and um, we got a little bit deep on messenger, which is a, kind of a rare thing to do. Um, but it's like, how, how are things, man? Like, what are, you, what are you finding joy in at the moment? And I messaged back something, and I thought it was actually rather profound. Uh, afterwards, I was like, oh, Andy. Well, well, that was a bit. But, uh, <laughs> humble brag. <laughs> hey. um, but I messaged back, like, I've just really been discovering the joy and discipline. There's joy and discipline. And I'm like, that makes me sound like an old man, eh? <laughs> like a dad. There's joy and discipline. And what I meant by that was I, I found myself like kind of going down, a, not, a, not a bad path, but I was just getting a little bit lazy, a bit ho-ha about things. And, um, and I went, actually, I've got to snap out of this. So I decided that, you know, um, even though it was dark and, and cold and um, in the middle of the term, it can get... Like when daylight savings hits, you know, you wake up early and, and it's dark. And um, I'm not sure about you, but I don't naturally find it easy to get out of bed. I have, I have to work at that. So I was like, no, I'm going to be disciplined. So I get up every morning and I would spend time with God and I'd spend time doing something physical um, to try and, and steward well with what I've been given. Um, you know, I've been given a mind. I've been given a relationship with God. I want to steward that. And I've also been given, uh, you, you, we've all been given bodies that we want to look after. And it was incredible how much joy I got out of that, waking up that little bit earlier and actually getting out of bed most of the time. <laughs> Once I got out of bed, I found the joy in that, sorry, probably later on in the day. But um, I think there really is a joy in discipline and, and getting something done. I'm trying to lead to my next point, which we go to um, in uh, Genesis 2, 16 to 17. It says, the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now I just want to point out the first thing that God said to him is, you can eat anything. Like he didn't start off by saying, you can't do this, you can't do this. He said, hey, hey, I've created all this stuff. All this stuff is incredible, but don't do this one. And I think for us to be thriving in life, we actually need a necessary no. Or we need to be able to show some restraint. When, we can, when we're able to go, actually, no, that's not good for me, it's almost like it builds in strength to us. Just because I can do something doesn't mean that I should do something. I think um, when we've got a purpose, purpose can help develop restraint. When we've got a purpose, we're like, no, no, I, I know where I'm heading for. I've got this in, my, this in, my, in mind, and I want to be heading towards this, and so I have to say no to this. And when we've, uh, and restraint, develops strength. So we've got purpose develops restraint, and restraint develops strength inside of us. Not that we're going to have it all together all the time, but hey. In 1 Peter uh, 2, 11, it says, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Once again, we're looking for the health of our soul. Things that are... <coughs> There, there are things that are trying to kind of crowd that space, which we actually need to be saying, no, I've got a purpose. I'm going that way. I'm going the way that God's leading me. I need to say no to some things for the health of my soul. Yeah? And I think one of the big things is it says, I urge you as foreigners and, exa and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. That there was like, um, in a strange land, be an example. Like, when we say no to things, not, not that we want to be people who say no to everything. We want to be known for what we're for. But when, we've, we've, when we can say, no, we've got a higher standard than that, other people look at that and go, man, what's that person? What, what's she and what's, what's he, he got about and that's different? I want some of that. And that's a bit of purpose for us. Like our actions should be as, used as an example for others around us. I think that's a massive one if you're, like, um, if you're still at school, like, other people, if, if they see you like, making decisions going, actually, no, nah, that's, that's not cool, you, you can stand out so much and in a really powerful way. And others around you, may, they may mock you a little bit, but I can tell you now, the strength and the respect that you'll, you'll gain will be massive. Real quick story. Um, 
I remember high school, I got, um, I got uh, mocked a bit uh, by my mates. They used to call me things, that, and they had no idea, but they called me Pharaoh because they knew I was a Christian. And they heard Pharaoh was a character in the Bible who actually wasn't a Christian at all. And he actually was like <laughs> quite anti them. But they I had a couple of mates who who have a, have a dig at me. And they would they would tease me every now and again. And that's and at I was gonna say that's cool, but actually at the time it wasn't cool. It was it was rough. Like I, I hated it. I didn't want to Yeah. I didn't I did not want to stand out. Um and so I was like, oh yeah, cool, 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 cool. Um and they would they would give me grief and I mean I wasn't or didn't always live the best example I'm gonna put my hand up, um but then I had an um when push came to shove one of those same mates who who mocked me um <coughs> some things went down in his life and he was kind of facing a few things and I was the first person that he asked for help for from because I'd lived a life not always but I made a stand at least and said look this is what I say no to he goes actually that's something that I respect and I want to come after that. If you're at school, man, you've got power to change your friends. All right? Cool. And it leads me to my last point. In uh, Genesis 2, verse 18, it says, The Lord said for him, It is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a su- help or suitable for him. This is not a, ma- uh, a marriage or anything like that um, uh, message. So we've got rest, responsibility, restraint. What do you think my last R might be? Yeah. All right. For our souls to flourish, we need to be in relationship with others, yeah? Eden was perfect. Eden was this place that God had made in perfection, and yet he looked at Adam and said, it's not good for you to not have people in your life. For, it's not good for your soul to be alone. You know, that, that external perfection of Eden did not equate to e- internal perfection. There's stuff going on inside of us, but we need people to walk alongside and us to walk alongside others for our soul to be mostly health, uh, to be at most health. We need to ask ourselves those questions like, who are the people that we invest in and who are the people that we let invest in us? Yeah? People say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. But actually, if you say, show me your friends, you can say, I'll show, me, I'll show you your soul health. Who are the people around you who are speaking into you. Now, I'm not saying that you can only want to be with, with people who are like-minded. I think it's really important to be with people who stretch your thinking. But who are the people you really let speak to you on a deep level? We need to be intentional about growing and nurturing friendships that are good for our souls. Yeah. All these four points, rest, responsibility, restraint, and relationship. I think when we can use those things quite practically... Um, we've got a we've got a strong base there, but they're all interrelated. And if one of those things starts to to falter, then it's it's kind of uh, it, it doesn't quite work as as well. I know. Um, recently, as I was mentioning over, over lockdown, um, <coughs> I was doing exercise and I was taking r- the responsibility of looking after my body really well. I was like, I was doing some stuff, and we were motivated. There's a bunch of us who were kind of messaging each other, and at home. Chris and I and Cam, we would we'd do circuits, um, and then I tweaked my knee a little bit, and I couldn't do a few things, um, I, I couldn't um, run like I used to, and all of a sudden I felt, found myself kind of just going, ah, oh, getting a bit lazy, like not too worried about things, and I, I, wasn't taking, I wasn't taking responsibility of what I'd been given, and then I found myself um, not being able to show as much restraint in some areas as well. And um, I was like, hold up, I, I need to change these things. Even recently, um, uh, with with uh, Chris and I and, and my journey, um, where she spoke about last week about with, with baby with, with her heart, um, it spoke massively to me um, in that whole idea of um, being able to rest in God. And I, I I'm a person who I like to think that I can actually make a massive change in things. I can do a lot. I, I can, by my actions, I can make a big difference. I can't do anything for our baby at the moment, other than pray. But I'm learning that I have to take rest and enjoy the rest in God. Because if, I, if I'm not doing that part right, then the other parts of my soul don't feel, feel right. I was thinking about this, and um. The picture that came to my head was that of a stool. This kind of stool, just to clarify. (laughs) 
this kind of stool. And I'm not sure if you've ever sat on, on one that's a little bit wonky. It is. It bugs you away. Have you ever sat on, you know, the one that just like, you just actually, in all honesty, I quite enjoy those kind of stools because it just gives me something to do when someone's speaking and it's kind of boring. <laughs> so I'm just like, doo, 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 doo. Um, but you've got a couple of options when you want to fix a stool. Like if, if we've got, if our soles, soles aren't right, one of the legs is a bit shorter. We've got a couple of options what we can do to, to fix that stool to make it even again. One of them is to do the old um, the Raglan Classic, which is you get the, um, the cardboard, and then you put underneath, you don't know, fold in half again. Oh, no, fold in half again. And you just keep on folding until it's the right thickness, and then you put it on, you're like, oh, that's all right. That's all good. Like, you can fix a stool. You can, you can like, just jimmy that in and just, you know, add a little bit to it. And, yep, yeah, cool, cool. I can do that all by myself. Fix that. Beautiful. Until you need to move the stool. And then, like, someone's like, oh, do you mind just bring that over here? We're like, we're, we're actually going to hang out here. I'm like, oh. And you got to pick up that little bit of masterpiece that you've done of cardboard of genius and, and take that with you. Um, the other option is a bit more drastic. You get out your tools and you, your one end's a bit lower, so you cut off the edges of the other. And that works all right until you find another part of your soul goes down. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. So I'll just take another bit out. And then soon you're sitting on the floor. And that's not a very productive stool either. The, um, the fix, if, you've, if we've ever got a stool that, um, that is a bit wonky, is to get a creator to remake that leg. Yeah? That's the real fix. Like everything else is temporary. Everything else is a quick fix. The first part I read was in Genesis 2 verse 7, and I think this is the real fix. Those other four points are practical points, but this is here is how we restore it back in the first place. It said, Then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So how's our souls? Are there areas that you think are a little bit wobbly at the moment? Because for me, it doesn't take long before they, those legs are a bit wonky. And I need to go back to the Creator and have Him breathe His life back into us again. Because that's, that's the only way that our souls can be restored. Those four points are practical points. We can keep them restored. But to get it to where it was in that first place, the blueprint in Eden was God breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. And if our souls have got God's breath in it, it's taking us from that distance to something that's much closer, yeah? Cool. I'd love to pray for us and then um, as I'm praying, um, if there's one of those four areas that you're like, Okay, oh yeah, that's something that I need to work on. Um, put that in the front of your mind, and as 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 I'm praying, hopefully God's kind of just encouraging you. Hey, God, I need your breath in this area. I need you to step up in this area. Rather than just sit back and go, cool, and he's praying, he's wrapping up. Be, be let's be proactive right now. What is it that we can do to move and change? Cool, let's pray. Father, thank you that you breathed uh, into, into mankind, into humanity. You breathed your breath of life. And you're still breathing. And we still need your breath. Because when we think of our own lives, um, there are times that it's amazing. But there are areas that we're not so strong in. Lord, may, um, may your breath, may your spirit, may it show us where we can grow. May it show us where we need your help, where we can get our souls to a place that are, that are much more close to you. Father, we don't want to be distanced. We don't want to find that separation from you. We want to come home. 
We want our souls to be in that place where we're in complete comfort, not because of what's happening to us, but because of you inside of us. Holy Spirit, even just right now, we just invite you to breathe again. For the next 30 seconds, I want to ask you if, uh, if you're comfortable just to, in your head you don't have to say it loud. Can you ask the Holy Spirit to breathe into an area in your life right now? 